Good evening, everyone. The executive session of the Wayne Board of Education regular meeting of August 17, 2023 was convened in the Wayne Township Health Department, room number two, 475 Valley Road. Statement of compliance setting forth date, time, and location was read in with the requirements of the Open Public Meetings Act. The roll call was taken. The meeting was recessed is now being reconvened. This time I ask everyone to please rise for the flag salute, followed by a moment of silence. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you, everyone. Please be seated. Dr. Tobeck. Okay, good evening, everybody. Um, I have a lot to report about as we get ready for the start of the school year, but the good news is that we're in great position to start and have an excellent school year. Um, the new employee orientation is taking place this week from August 16th to 18th. It's an outstanding program, and we're doing everything we can to make sure all 85 of our new employees are in the best position to be successful as they start their work here in the Wayne Township Public Schools. We're very fortunate to have attracted a number of outstanding education, educators to fill our vacancies. However, I would like to share that our new employee orientation was different from prior years, primarily because the vast majority of new employees are not recent college graduates, instead veteran teachers. This is due to the ongoing teacher shortage, and we adjusted our program, taking that into consideration. Um, at this moment, I'd like to ask Mrs. Reichman to talk a little bit about our current enrollment. Good evening, everyone. We've been closely monitoring the enrollment for elementary education um, each week and doing our best to make sure that we adhere to the board approved guidelines for class sizes. Um, just this week, we have um, added additional staff at Lafayette. We have one second grade section that was added. At Randall Carter, we have added an additional third grade teacher. And um, unusual, <laughs> unusual for this time of year, JFK enrollment has gone down in fifth grade. Um, so that allowed for a transfer of a staff member to take one of those vacancies. And we are continuing to monitor grade four at APT. Uh, so, so at this time, we're within the limit that the board has approved, and we will continue to watch over the next few weeks. So I'd like to just take a minute to talk about our annual administrative retreat, which consists of all of our district and school level administrators. It was held on August 15th and 16th. It was a great event that was well received because it included a number of important and relevant topics. Thanks to Mr. Pavlak for joining us and sharing some encouraging words to our administrative team. And also Mr. Pavlak joined us for our new employee orientation to share his insight about the Wayne Township Public Schools as a board member, parent, and now as a fellow educator. One of the most important jobs that we have is identifying and recommending outstanding educators for each of our classrooms. This summer, we had our work cut out for us because I feel like we have um, some vacancies to fill, but we have some excellent hiring recommendations for board consideration. I wanted to take a moment to thank the HR department, our principals, and members of interview committees across the district for their excellent work in finding great candidates to fill vacancies. As you will see from the agenda, there are pages and pages of recommended hirings for the Board of Education to consider. In addition to hiring for instructional staff, there are some very important staffing recommendations included for assistant principals. First, Jay Schaefer, assistant principal at Wayne Valley High School. Jay is currently a lead math teacher at Wayne Valley, and she's held that role for three years. This is important to know because it is her colleagues that select her to work as their lead teacher. In addition, she has been a leader in the use of technology in the classroom. Mrs. Schaefer is a lifelong Wayne resident and a Wayne Valley alum. And during the interview process, she expressed that it has always been her dream to return to Wayne Valley and build on the great academic tradition that helped her so much since she graduated from Valley. Nicole Gibbs is being recommended for assistant principal of student support services. Nicole comes to the Wayne Township Public Schools as an experienced assistant principal from Eastside High School. She has a very strong background in special education and developed a behavioral disabilities program for the Patterson Schools that continues to grow. 
Cole as a special education instructional supervisor has worked closely with teachers to improve instruction and develop curriculum. Dr. Sir is very excited to recommend Ms. Gibbs and bring her experience to the Wayne Township Student Support Services Department. Note about school threat assessment teams. So on August 1st of 2022, the governor signed into law um, a, well, a series of laws requiring school districts to establish threat assessment teams for the 23-24 school year. The purpose of a threat assessment team is to provide school teachers, administrators, and other staff with assistance in identifying students of concern, assessing those students' risk for engaging in violence or other harmful activities, and delivering intervention strategies to manage the risk of harm for students who pose a potential safety risk. So at this point, the district is well on its way to being prepared for the start of the year with our threat assessment teams and how we're going to handle that. So we have a few weeks to go, but we're well on our way. Um, for a facilities update, I think last week I provided an extensive report to the Board of Ed regarding our readiness for the start of the school year, and that included an update on our many facility projects. The list was exhausted, and I will leave it to the Facilities Committee Chair to report further in a few minutes when committee reports are shared. As far as HIV reports, um, I'm, I'm reporting the following data related to harassment, intimidation, and bullying incidents in the Wayne Township Public Schools. There have been three incidents of HIV investigated since my last report, and none of those cases were deemed to meet the criteria of actual HIV, HIV incidents. Just to note that these are, obviously we're in the summer, and so it doesn't seem like it would make sense to have HIV cases when there's no school. One of them was from an extended year program, and the others are from the very end of last school year. That concludes Thank you. my report. Thank you. Mr. Moffitt, revisions to the agenda? Yes, we have some tonight, and uh, it'll be, if you'll be patient with me, I have some talking to do. So let's get going. Um, first area is under M, Human Resources. Number one, approval of district staff. Uh, rescind number two, Maria Quinones, which is Q-U-I-N-O-N-E-S, as bus driver transportation. <laughs> One time, uh, I should say, full time equivalent of one and related information found on the agenda tonight. Moving on, revise number 36, Nicole Golem, G O L A M, from, uh, from step 12 MA, because that's a step on a guide, which is at $74,375 to step 13 MA guide, step amount $77,275, and revise start date from September 1st, 2023, or as soon as possible to November 1st, 2023. The next item is rescind, again, on M1, rescind number 44, Emmanuel Rodriguez, R-O-D-R-I-G-U-E-Z, as van driver, transportation, full-time equivalent of one, and related information found on tonight's agenda. Moving on to rescind, uh, again, M1, rescind number 52, Matma Mola, which is last name is M-O-H-L-A, LTR grade five, Payne, uh, Pines Lake, full-time equivalent of one, and related information found on the agenda. Moving on to M1 number 59, we're going to add a Monica Vovino, V-O-I-N-O-V, is a teacher third grade at Randall Carter, PC number 01-01-50 slash AEZ, account number 11-120-100-101-05-000. That is step 15, MA plus 30 of the WEA salary guide uh, at amount $94,775, effective September 1st, 2023, or as soon as possible. Moving on to M6, approval of additional compensation. We, uh, as it relates to number 25, lead teachers high school, account number 11-000-221-104-14-000. Recent number nine, which is J. Schaefer, S-C-H-A-F-F-E-R, -S Wayne Valley lead math teacher. We're going to add Daniela Petoffi, P-E-T-O-F-I, last name, Wayne Valley lead math teacher. M7, approval of appointment of extracurricular coaches. We're going to rescind number five, Greg Renberger, R-E-H-B-E-R-G-E-R, -E -E assistant coach, girls tennis at Wayne Valley's high school and related information found on tonight's agenda. We will add William Chavel, C-H-A-V-E-L, assistant coach, girls tennis, Wayne Valley's high school, step one at an amount of 5,398 out of account number 
dash four oh two dash one hundred dash one hundred dash fifteen dash zero five one. Moving on to M11, approval of revised items. We're revising nine, which is employee ID number 5107, Spanish, George Washington, uh, WEA contractual extension end date from January 31st, 2024 to January 1st, 2024, and returning um, January 2nd, 2024. Uh, moving on, we'll be adding a new item 19, approval of administrative leave, uh, and that will be revised number one, ID employee number 5438 remove end date of August 17 2023 uh, item number 22 approval of paraprofessional assignments we're going to revise Patricia Graham G R A H A M from Pines Lake to Wayne Hills M23 is approval of appointment of extracurricular advisors for elementary schools we're going to add David Mecca night concert James Fallon step 4 at amount of $742. Out of account number 11-401-100-100-04-045. Moving on in that agenda item is we're going to revise Laura Luzzi, L-U-I-Z-Z-I, bus duty from step one, $2,524 to step one, uh, $2,421. Revise Sherry Malouf Potter, it's M A L O U F dash P O T T E R. Bus duty step two from 2,421 to step two, 2,524. Revise Natiki Deming, D E M M I N G, to Natiki Deming, just correcting the spelling. Rescind Peggy Biondo, James Fallon, bus duty step one. $1,211, and we're going to add a Diane Neville, which is N-E-A-V-I-L-L-E, -L -L -E. James Fallon, bus duty, step one, 1,211. We're also adding uh, to tonight's agenda um, M25, which is approval of sidebar agreement for athletics. The recommended, uh, recommended action reads as follows. <clears throat> the Wayne Township Board of Education approves sidebar agreement regarding athletics as attached by reference with the Wayne Education Association. The board president and board secretary are authorized to execute appropriate documentation to implement same. We're adding a number M27, which will read um, <clears throat> approval of sidebar agreement, HIB investigation, and that will read the Wayne Township Board of Education approves sidebar agreement regarding elementary HIB investigations, compensation as attached on reference with the Wayne Education Association dated August 17, 2023. The board president and the board secretary are author authorized to execute appropriate documentation to Im implement same. Um, also uh, adding to the agenda tonight is Q uh, under section school resource legal. We are adding Q1, approval of employment separation agreement and, and release. The recommend, uh, recommend a, excuse me, the recommended action reads as follows. Resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, hereby approves the employment separation agreement and release in the matter of employee ID number 7540, dated August 17th, 2023, as attached by reference, and further authorizes the board president and secretary to execute the same on behalf of the board. The business administrator and superintendent are authorized to take all further steps required by the terms of the settlement to further implement same. We'll be adding Q2, approval of employment separation agreement and release. That resolution reads as follows. Uh, resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, hereby approves the settlement agreement and general release in the matter of employee ID number 4593 dated August 17, 2023 as attached by reference and further authorizes the board president and secretary to execute same on behalf of the board. The business administrator and superintendent are authorized to take all further steps required by the terms of the settlement to further implement same. Um, adding Q3, approval of settlement agreement. That action reads as resolved that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, hereby approves a settlement agreement and general release in the matter of employee ID number 5438, dated August 17, 2023, as attached by reference, and further authorizes the Board, President, and Secretary to execute same on behalf of the Board. 
The business administrator and the superintendent are authorized to take all further steps required by the terms of the settlement to further implement same. Um, adding, adding Q4, uh, approval of settlement agreement. That action reads as follows. Resolved that the Board of Education upon the recommendation of the superintendent hereby approves the settlement agreement and general release in the matter of student ID number 8984 seven nine zero six zero eight as attached by reference and further authorized by the board president and secretary to execute same on behalf of the board the business administrator and superintendent are authorized to take all further steps required by the terms of the settlement to further implement same adding q5 approval of hib determination that action reads as follows resolve that the board of um, affirm um, Affirm the superintendent's decision on HIB case, uh, decision HIB case number 87 2022-2023 following an appeal as required by NJSA 18A 37-15 parentheses B parentheses 6 parentheses E. Adding Q6 approval of settlement agreement that action reads as follows. Resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, hereby approves of the settlement agreement and general release in the matter of student ID number 8256743454, OAL docket number EDS 04994-2023N, agency reference number 152-5-23 as attached by reference, and further authorizes the Board President and secretary to execute same on behalf of the board. The business administrator and superintendent are authorized to take all further steps required by the terms of the settlement to further implement same. And finally, uh, Q7, approval of settlement agreement. That action reads as follows. Resolve that the Board of Education, upon the recommendation of the superintendent, hereby approves of the settlement agreement and general release in the matter of student ID number 85981709000 OAL docket number EDS 06928-2023S as attached by reference and further authorizes the board president and secretary to execute same on behalf of the board. The business administrator and superintendent are authorized to take all further steps required by the terms of the settlement to further implement same. That concludes my additions and changes to tonight's agenda. Thank you, Mr. Moffitt. At this time, we're going to open the meeting to the public for agenda items only. This portion of the meeting is open for citizens for comment on agenda items only. Residents are asked to state their name, address, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to three minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. The board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at a subsequent meeting under old businesses. Do I have a mover? Mr. Giordano, I mean, uh, Mr. Fatal, Mr. Battersfield. Anyone from the public on agenda items only? Seeing no one, move to close. Second. Mrs. Kazan, Mr. Patel. All right, move on to the agenda. Do I have a mover for the agenda? Mr. President, I'd like to move the whole agenda. Mr. Patel, Mr. Giordano. Oh, we're going to do them after we approve them. All right, any comments on the agenda? Mrs. Kazan. Not so much a comment, but a thank you. If you look at our agenda, L5 under education. I printed them out. There's one, two, let's see, I have four pages mm -hmm. yep. of community partners in our town, uh, and some even outside of our town, who do job training for our students that are not necessarily college-bound learners, and some who are. But um, this is something they do uh, as members of our community to help our kids get ahead. And I hope that you'll take a look at this lengthy list and uh, go out of your way to patronize these businesses because they're, they're a gift to us and our students, and we appreciate them. It takes a village. Thank you. Anybody else? Uh, I, too, would like to recognize all our businesses on, on that list. It is tremendous. Every year it grows. 
we thank them. We thank them for the students giving them the opportunities to have, that they can gain um, in, from businesses in the town. So I thank everyone. All right. Um, Mr. Moffat. Mr. Battershill? Yes. Mr. Fatale? Yes. Mr. Giordano? On M25, M26, I am to abstain, and yes on everything else. Mrs. Kazan? Yes. Mrs. Rigoloso? Um, yes on everything except no on M4, number one, and number 31. Number one and number 31? Mrs. Wentick? Yes on everything except M number 4, 1, and 31 is a no. 4, 1, and 31? Correct. And all on the rest. Mr. Prasakos? Abstain on M.4.1 and yes on everything else. 4 and M1? 4 M, M1? M is in Mary. Dot 4.1. Dot 4.1, four dot gotcha. Everything and all else. Mr. Pavlak? Uh, I'll abstain on M25 and 26 and yes to everything else. Motion carries. This time, committee reports. Mr. Giordano. I drew the lucky card. I got two of them this week. Uh, we'll start with the, the chronologically the older one of the two. This was the communication committee meeting. This was held on July 24th, 5 p.m. virtually. Uh, the meeting was myself and Ms. Rigoloso, along with Dr. Toback. Uh, this is the communications committee meeting. We discussed. Uh, the thought exchange contract, the bullying prevention education campaign. We also did some reviews of the media coverage. Um, the committee spent a significant amount of time speaking about the Bleacher Exchange uh, campaign, and the committee was able to preview, preview the wording of the signs to be posted at each of the stadiums, as well as an announcement to be made at games. Uh, we have a worker will uh, announce will uh, announce will work that one also. Uh, the announcement language was reviewed by the BOE attorney Sarah Gober. In addition, the committee spent time discussing the thought exchange contract and prior dealings with the company. Finally, the committee members were provided with a detailed inventory of recent media coverage. Uh, second meeting it was the education committee meeting, which took place on August 15th virtually. Uh, myself, uh, Ms. Rigoloso, uh, and Ms. Reichman were in attendance. Uh, Ms. Wintick was briefed uh, afterwards on the entirety of the meeting. Uh, we reviewed the July 5th education committee minutes. Uh, we looked over the, which I'm very happy to see, the dual agreements with Bergen Community College, the dual agreement with Fairleigh Dickinson University, the dual agreement with William Patterson University. Other uh, universities were brought up in the meeting and they were agreed previously. These were just the new ones uh, in addition to on them. Um, on the education front, we had uh, a reordering of the sequence of the social studies curriculum, lining with the state better, exchanging uh, different topics to different grades in six, seven, and eight. Um, there was an adjustment uh, after reviewing the fourth grade, uh, uh, fourth grade pace, especially in reading, uh, to be more efficient for the students. Um, they reviewed the writing resources for grade five. These are all ongoing things that happen uh, at different levels almost every year to try and tweak and. Uh, to make them a little better for the students, so this is nothing unusual. Um, the ABLE program where we talked about, these are uh, mods uh, for exercise in physical education, uh, specifically focused on integrating special needs students in with the general students uh, and training the education professionals uh, to help integrate them in uh, better and more efficiently. Um, that will be all for that meeting. And next one will take place on September 23rd uh, at 5 o'clock in the administration building. Thank you very much. The uh, Technology and Safety Committee met on August 16th uh, in the evening with uh, Joe Bouchard, myself, and Mike Fatale. Um, we discussed the district website rollout, um, which we expect to be starting a, start, a soft launch of in January. Um, we spoke over the data center upgrade and the um, continuing ability to be able to put that into place and where we are with the uh, ground surveys. 
Um, we spoke about the phone project updates, and uh, which is now rolled out across or installed in all of the schools. Um, we still have to get this into the uh, Nellis building. Um, but other than that, the schools are all on the upgraded phone system, so that's great. Um, the summer updates, uh, we are in a good place. All of the Chromebooks to be handed out to uh, the New Year's, uh, the juniors and so on, are ready to go. And we've also updated all, almost all of the networks in almost all of the schools, which will be a great place for us to be able to start new projects from for the next year and beyond. Um, and we spoke over the learning management system um, going into place. Um, we expect to start training on this sometime in the fall and be ready to start uh, rolling some of that out early in the new year. Great. Thank you. Mr. Patel. Do you have a question? You go? Okay. No, no, I have uh, a committee meeting, too. Um, the personnel committee met today consists of, consisting of myself, Mr. Pavlik, Ms. Wentick, and Ms. Clark. We did, went reviewed the June 15th committee mini minutes. We went over job descriptions of assistant principal at the secondary level, caregiver at the, for the extended day program, enrichment speci specialist at the extended day program, highly specialized caregiver for the extended day program. We also spoke about a pilot program going from para to teacher. We spoke about our sick leave policy that uh, due to Governor Murphy signing into law, there will be revisions that have to take place in regards to that. And lastly, we spoke about the health and wellness supervisor position that could potentially take place of the head nurse position. And that concludes my report. Any questions? Mrs. Kazak. Yes. You're up. Okay, get comfortable. This is a long one. Um, the Facilities and Transportation Committee met on Tuesday, August 15th at 11.30 a.m. In attendance were myself, Mr. Persakos, Administrators Lauren Tibbetts, Peter Romain, Richard Skibitsky, and William Moffitt. Unfortunately, through no fault of his own, uh, Mr. Battershall was unable to attend, and I gave him an update. He graciously agreed to uh, let us proceed without him. It was a last-minute change to the time and place. Um, Okay, so starting off with agenda items, there's an agreement with PSENG on the agenda, which is regarding security, so I won't go into any detail on that. Um, we talked about the change of use um, item, which is required by the state of New Jersey. Whenever we take a room that was meant for, say, a classroom and decide to change it to a lab. This has to go through DOE approval and all of the uh, I's have to be dotted, the T's have to be crossed, and they have to make sure that we're following all the requirements for the use of that room. Uh, we also applied for dual use agreements for four of our elementary schools. And dual uses, you'll see, in some of our elementary schools where we take a classroom and basically put up a partition and we have small group instruction on either side. It's not conducive, it's not ideal, but we're, we're busting at the seams, folks. And uh, you know we have high enrollment and it's only getting higher. So uh, again, that's something we have to ask the DOE for approval on. And another item is the uh, full house over at the ECC the state of New Jersey requires us to have a bathroom in any kindergarten classroom. And if we can't meet that standard, then we have to file a plan as to how we're going to get these children back and forth to the bathroom and still have enough coverage in the classroom and everything is covered so that it's not an unsafe situation. So, um, you know, on the one hand, it's good. Everyone wants to come to the ECC, and uh, Wayne is a great place to educate your children, but we're getting uh, pretty tight. Uh, we discussed our permit schedule for, uh, per permit fee schedule, but that's gonna be tabled for the next meeting. This is for outside groups that uh, choose to use our football fields or our facilities. We have different classes of groups. For instance, our PTO would never pay a fee. Our local nonprofits would never pay a fee, but sometimes people come from out of the community that want to use our wonderful fields and our buildings, and we do charge them a fee. The policy on the agenda for the threat assessment is uh, a second reading on the policy, 
but on the regulation it's a first and second reading uh, since it's mandatory it's allowed for us to do it in one reading and it's only one meeting for the summer so operations this is the time of year that the facilities department does the lion's share of the work when the students are out of the building and I just have to give kudos to them because they work tirelessly for two months getting all these projects done in a very short period of time as best they can. And uh, we're fortunate enough to have people in our department that are saving us money constantly by doing things in house that normally we would have to contract out. Um, if you drive by Wayne Valley, look at the beautiful flowers out front, look at the side entrance, more beautiful flowers. The goal posts have been painted, uh, the, the weeding and seeding is uh, going on, the fields are in shape, beautiful, sprinkler heads have been fixed. Uh, inside the buildings, it just runs the gamut. Painting, waxing, cleaning, um, whatever needs to be repaired is being repaired. And these are just the regular routine things that are done every summer. This isn't even the, the big projects. Um, we also discussed the signage for the bleachers and I have a picture here. There's going to be a sign on the front of the bleachers and a side on the back of a side of the bleachers and they, they basically uh, say something a little different. The first one is children must have parent or adult supervision at all times while on the bleachers. Do not enter, climb, or play under the bleachers. And the other side sign is do not enter, climb, or play under the bleachers. And again, children must have parent or adult supervision at all times while on bleachers. And these, these uh, signs were approved by the insurance company, the attorney, and um, everyone else that needed to give it the high sign. Uh, summer projects. We are continuing with the next generation science labs. We're losing a lot of our students to the STEM program at PCTI. So we have to upgrade our science labs to compete. And we've been doing that um, year over year. You know, we can't do them all at once. It's a very expensive project. I and mean, we're totally gutting and bringing in all the latest and greatest to give our students what they need. Um, so Wayne Hills, that's ongoing. Uh, bathrooms at Randall Carter and APT. Most of the work that needed to be done while the students were out of the building has been done. They only had one staff bathroom at both of those schools. Um, so, and that one, I believe you had to cut through the principal's office to get to. So a hallway was built and uh, now the work can be ongoing without cutting through the principal's office and school can start on time. and they'll finish up the work in the evening and on the weekends unfortunately because we had such a hard time finding a contractor fallon is going to have to wait until next summer we weren't even able to get started there uh, then there's the data center um, at 15 ellis drive a lot of work has been going on there uh, not just the data center but the building itself with the hvac that failed last year and we had a generator and uh, it's, uh, it's been an ongoing problem, another old building, and it was time because, uh, you know, where we store sensitive uh, information uh, in a data center is, is a priority for us. So that's going to need some more work. It will probably be ready by mid to late September. They should be back in at 50 Dallas. Uh, I also have pictures here of the goalposts and uh, the lovely flowers if anyone wants to see them at the high school uh rod grants we the, the, everything takes forever when you're dealing with government in the state of new jersey clearly and we applied for these rod grants that were offered last year and we picked four projects that we knew we could get matching funds on if if these rod grants were approved unfortunately they are backed up months they don't have enough people working down at the DOE so now they've decided to move that uh, job over to the county offices but the Passaic County office doesn't have a person so the Essex County office is handing handling now Essex and Passaic I mean the, the bureaucratic system is mind-boggling but the good news is because these are what they call level one projects meaning they're they're high priority uh, like a roof for instance if, it's, if a roof fails we're in big trouble um, but we want those grants. We want those matching funds because then that's not going to be 100% paid for with taxpayer money. 
uh, we're hoping for a mid-October approval, finally, and those items can be pulled out of the referendum and out of a $2.8 million worth of projects, we're hoping to get like 1.1 million, which is nice, it's 40%. Um, it's, it's a good uh, situation if we can get it, which most likely we will, but again, <coughs> hurry up and wait. You know, the plans were uh, submitted months ago. Uh, then we go on to transportation. We talked about all the outside uh, transportation agreements that we have to get through Northern Regional and the parent contracts. Sometimes we uh, allow parents to transport their special ed students. Um, driver update. Okay, we had two. We lost two. They got a better offer from their previous employer. So there's bidding wars now out there for bus drivers. We're still in need. Uh, if you know anyone who's interested in getting a CDL license, we do an in-house training program. We pay for everything, provided they work for us. Once, obviously, they pass. Um, it's all contingent. Uh, so we have four open positions currently, but we did finally find the mechanic that we've been looking for. Because we do our own in-house busing, we have a lot of repairs and things that need to be done, but I don't know if anyone saw the news about that poor child that was left in a harness unattended by their aide on an outsourcing bus company. It's not a situation we ever want to be in with our students. You know, we fight hard to keep that busing in-house. Out outsourcing is not, not going to be what we're looking for. And then they just changed the name of the bus company the following day. We, we were talking about the fact that they just put magnetic signs on the buses because as soon as they're shut down, they just reopen under a new name. So thankfully, that's not how we do things in Wayne. Uh, all right, eligibility. Uh, unfortunately, we, we purchased a new software a couple of years ago, and we've been auditing over the last two years, and uh, that previous software wasn't doing the best job on determining uh, how far the distance was for eligibility for the buses. And we've had a few that were kicked back that were considered ineligible, and. We're offering parents a right to appeal it to, and take a walk and do the distance check. And, you know, we're sorry about that, but we have to make sure that everyone is getting the same treatment and that everyone is the correct distance away in order for them to receive the busing. Uh, the security drill I talked about at the last meeting. Um, and now is the time where the, the bus department gets busy with the student routing, the uh, driver picking their routes and they do a dry run and the student bus passes for you parents will be emailed on August 25th. Um, and for those who have parents that aren't necessarily living in the same house, I know this happened when we first started this process, uh, check with your other parent. <laughs> Sometimes it goes to the parent that you think it should be coming to you, but it goes to them and you know, before you call up the transportation part, department, make sure you check with all the legal guardians. Um, and we're getting quotes on new buses because we're on a schedule to replace them. They're, we're only allowed to use them for a certain number of years and apparently the prices have seriously skyrocketed. And that's my report. Thank you. Mr. Pizakis. The Finance Committee met virtually on August 15th at 12.15 in the afternoon. Uh, I was joined by uh, the regular committee board members, uh, Mr. Pavlak, Mrs. Kazan, and we had a, a guest committee member, uh, Mrs. Wentink. Uh, we had our administrators, uh, Mr. Moffitt and Ms. Leidig attend. We approved the July 12th, 2023 meeting minutes, and we went through the agenda items, um, the check register, uh, the PCTI tuition contract uh, for 2023-2024, they billed us for 229 students. We expect that number to, to come in a little bit lower. Um, went through the, the parent tuition contract. Um, uh, and there were many, many contracts uh, on the agenda since there's been a, a gap since the last meeting. Uh, we went through... Um, of note, I guess, uh, the NDA, the non-disclosure agreement with uh, PSE&G that was just mentioned by the facilities chair, um, the transportation agreements that were also mentioned by the facilities chair, so there was some overlap. I heard it twice because I'm on both committees, um, so I'm not going to bore everybody. 
Um, we went through um, some grants. We had the uh, standard entitlement grants, uh, Perkins grant, uh, IDEA grant, uh, which we receive uh, every year. It was a little bit of an increase. It has to get renewed every year. And we went through um, the athletic slash the theater ticketing contract that we have with hometown ticketing. Um, for many that don't know, um, the Wayne District uh, gladly subsidizes our athletics and um, theater um, productions here uh, in the district. And the gate receipts come in, you know, um, five times lower than what we end up paying um, the officials and, and um, everyone else involved in the production. So, um, so we went through that. Um, we uh, asked the administrators to reach out to the uh, athletic directors on, on pricing and see if there are uh, uh, other companies uh, that uh, would be able to uh, do the same thing and, and compare. Um, the business office should be ready. Uh, work continues, and it should be ready in September. Um, we learned that Sodexo is looking to start negotiations. Sodexo is our, our food service um, provider. Um, you know, they um, they haven't been making uh, you know the money that they thought they would be making, and uh, um, probably going to go to RFP in January. And um, we, uh, c the, the administrators are still closing orders and, uh, you know, have been in touch with our auditors. Uh, they hope to close in the next two weeks. Um, there's no date set for the audit. Um, so, but the July financials have been done. We're just waiting to be able to reconcile the uh, fiscal year end numbers with, with the July numbers. And let's see here. Uh, Peretti Samjan, um, you know, based on their scope, um, you know, they've surpassed um, uh, their base estimate. Uh, and we went through, um, you know, the facility projects, the ROD grants uh, that were also uh, uh, previously mentioned by the facility chair and, and uh, referendum updates. Thank you. Retirements, Mrs. Rigoloso. Okay, I'm honored to read about Beth O'Leary. Dr. Beth O'Leary started her career in Wayne in 2005. During her time in the Wayne School, she brought her ex expertise in law to the students at both Wayne Hills School and Wayne Valley High School. Dr. O'Leary was superb at helping students do research and preparing them for college by challenging them to think critically. Additionally, students particularly enjoyed Dr. O'Leary's class because they could have experiences outside the walls of the classroom. For example, student, uh, students went on field trips and enjoyed learning how the government functioned locally by working with the Wayne Township Council and its mem uh, members. Dr. O'Leary's professionalism and passion for teaching will surely be missed. We all hope Dr. O'Leary's time in retirement on her beloved farm with her horse, horses and her loving husband. And that's what for Dr. O'Leary. Thank you. This portion of the meeting is open to citizens for comment on any topic. Residents are asked to state their name, address, and subject matter. Comments may be limited to five minutes per person. Members of the public are discouraged from speaking negatively about an employee or a student. The board bears no responsibility for comments made by the public. Comments regarding employees or students cannot be legally responded to by the board. Other comments may be responded to tonight or at subsequent meetings under all business. Do I have a mover? Mr. Fatal, Mr. Giordano. Anyone from the public wishing to speak? Come on up. Um, Stacy Brooks, 56 Hunter Road, Lincoln Park. Back to talk about bleacher safety. In June, we felt understood and believed action would be taken. You assured us that safety was paramount and the administration would be held accountable. And then July, you presented signage as your solution to your unsafe, not up to code bleachers. 
Presenting signage as a solution for these hazardous bleachers is unacceptable. You're disregarding the dangers they pose, contradicting your earlier commitment. Both high schools are affected, and this neglect of a critical safety issue leaves us greatly disappointed and concerned. But let's move on from our feelings and focus on the facts. Fact. In July, you stated our son's fall was the only incident of its kind. Yet at the June board meeting, you were made aware that two weeks after Evan's fall, another three-year-old fell through your bleachers. Fact. According to the International Building Code, annual inspections for bleachers are mandatory. In July, you stated the bleachers had successfully passed all inspections. However, after requesting this information through the Open Public Records Act in May, there was a delay of over a month before our request was ultimately denied. Fact. You've delayed by months our additional OPRA requests for any correspondence related to the bleachers and all accidents related to the bleachers. Fact. Your district's architect, Perret Somgen Architects, discusses bleacher safety extensively on their website, referencing the New Jersey Bleacher Safety Act, explicitly mentioning the approximate 19,000 bleacher injuries annually. They emphasize that injuries can arise from substantial gaps between seating components. Fact, we have requested yet again through OPRA to see the report from this architectural firm. Our request, request has been delayed until September 30th. Fact, in 1997, code stated that openings were to be no wider than nine inches. In 1999, this code was changed, stating a four-inch sphere shall not pass through the openings between seatboards and footboards. This code has remained unchanged in 24 years, and so have your bleachers. Fact, with the existing gaps measuring 15 and a half inches, they deviate from the code standards. As these bleachers were considered up to code 60 years ago, they now fall short of code requirements. Dr. Toback gave News 12 New Jersey false information when he said Wayne's bleachers, although old, are up to code. That is incorrect. While they do comply with existing legal reg regulations, they do not meet the necessary safety standards and are not up to code. Fact. According to the 2017 ICC Section 300, Chapter 5, regarding existing bleachers and grandstands, Section 504 explicitly states that openings between seatboards and footboards exceeding 30 inches above the floor must be closed in a manner preventing a 4-inch diameter sphere from passing through. This ball is 4 inches. This is 15 and a half inches. Fact, children and families of all ages use these bleachers for school and community events. Bleacher pro fact, bleacher projects typically require extended planning and implementation periods, often spanning a year or more. Waiting for a referendum's approval will only extend this process and lead to further delays. Fact, signage, your solution to unsafe bleachers, has not been posted at either high school as of 4 p.m. today. We will leave you with this. There should never be an opportunity for anyone to fall through your bleachers, ever. And if money is the issue, and money is what's holding you all back from making your bleachers safe for everyone, then we ask you yet again, how much is a person's life worth? Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else? Hello, um, Ashley Brooks, 56 Hunter Road, Lincoln Park. For the past month, we've been committed to finding another solution for the bleachers. We've met with construction companies, bleacher installation companies, bleacher sales reps, and bleacher rental companies. And it's clear to us that there are other options. Both Dan Clayton and Southern Bleacher, prominent bleacher companies, indicated that $750,000 is an inflated cost for retrofitting. Dan Clayton discussed with us an option to close the gaps with used riser boards on all four sets of bleachers for under $250,000. They were further exploring ideas and wanted to discuss options directly with the school. 
I will share their contact information with all of you. Similarly, Southern Bleacher is drafting plans for a partial retrofit. We also explored multiple alternatives, including the addition of chain link fencing or decking lattice, construction netting, two aluminum flat bars per row, or two plumbing ripe pipes per row, as shown in this photo from another local high school. These will all restrict the openings to less than four inches so that somebody could not slip through. All of these ideas present a significantly lower cost compared to $750,000 and could potentially be executed by parent volunteers or maintenance staff that's already on your payroll to further reduce costs. If there is a genuine assurance of bleacher replacement next summer, as affirmed from July's meeting, another option could be a seasonal bleacher rental. Bleacher Rentals, a rental company, offered hydraulic bleachers for all sets that came in at $100,000 for this season. Purchasing family sections, both for the home and visiting sides to own, seems to be the most cost effective and optimal choice. Elevated bleachers that could be used as family sections would offer a safe area for families with young children or elderly members in line with your sign and announcement campaign, or so I thought until I heard the wording of it. These bleachers could serve as additional seating or be sold after bleacher reconstruction is completed. This investment would not be a waste of funds, offering both practicality and value for the future. Belson Outdoors elevated bleachers with 113 seats for each home side and 58 seats for each visitor side came to $81,098. Sightlines Athletic Facilities with 94 seats for each home side and 54 seats for each visitor side came to $57,074. I just want to note that every single option mentioned tonight did not even hit half of the $750,000 number which was presented as the only option in the July meeting other than signage. Lastly, and most importantly, in response to the comment about treating Evan's accident as a learning experience, it's imperative to note the consequences of inaction. In Northampton Area School District, only an hour and a half away from Wayne, three-year-old Shannon Caffrey and three-year-old Ryan Borger in the same year slipped through the gaps between the footboards and seatboards of the bleachers. After these two separate incidents, no efforts were made to alter their bleachers for safety. One year later, year and a half year old Matthew Thomas, who was seated in the second row, momentarily let go of an adult's knee to applaud his brother's touchdown when tragically he slipped through the identical gap between the seatboard and footboard, falling just five feet to his death. This incident underscores the critical importance of learning from the past. Evan's accident should serve as a catalyst for change, a chance to avoid preventable tragedies as demonstrated by the harrowing experiences in Lehigh Valley, Pennsylvania. While you might hold the belief that signage and education can avert a potential tragedy, this perspective fails to grasp the reality of what transpired on October 7, 2022. No sign or announcement can serve as an effective barrier to prevent a child from inadvertently slipping through an excessively large gap. So unless children are prohibited from using the bleachers altogether, all the time, the risk of such incidents remains an un undeniable concern, and you're just choosing to roll the dice. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else from the public? I don't like to pass up my shot. Uh, my name is Chung Wallace. I live at 18 Sterling Lane. I just think it's really important that um, I'm, of course, here to support Ashley and Stacy Brooks and their family, but I think it's really important to commend them for everything that they have been doing for almost a year. Um, the effort, the dedication, and the dignity that they have carried themselves with and presented you with time and time again. I just, I'm so proud to be your friend. Um, I'm grateful for you because this is what 
this town is about, right? I, this is why I volunteer so much, because we all care about, they're not doing this because of their kid. Their kid is fine. They could have walked away and said, okay, we're done. But, I mean, did you hear? She's just spitting facts like crazy. The amount of work that they spent to give you this information, to share with you, to work with you. They want to work with you. And I just think they need to be commended for that. Um, I also just wanted to you know, let you guys know, this is an important topic at the state level as well. Uh, I spoke with my good friend, Christian Barranco, who is an assemblyman, and Bill A5643. It's not moving yet but it's out there and this is gonna happen. We're gonna have to do something about it. So I think it's a great idea for you guys to work with these people that are here offering such wonderful support. And I just wanna say on behalf of all the parents in the Township of Wayne, thank you ladies very much. Anyone else from the public wishing to speak? Good evening, Mr. President, Good evening. the board members, and the Wayne School District community. My name is James Son, and I'm your incoming senior student council president at Wayne Valley. This past July, I volunteered at a community center for Ukrainian refugees in Vienna, Austria, called Train of Hope. The organization provides necessities for Ukrainian refugees free of charge and serves food to those who need it. When I came home, I decided to run a fundraiser to continue supporting Train of Hope. The money I raised will be exclusively used to care for these refugees. Thank you to Mr. Fer Mr. Meredith at Tap Into Wayne for sharing my story of volunteering and, and fundraising. And thank you, Mr. Prasakos, for your generation donation to this cause. Thanks to the generosity of our community, I have raised $4,270 in the past two weeks for Train of Hope. I would like to say to the refugees, I was privileged to serve that we stand with the people of Ukraine. Thank you so much for your support. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to speak? Mr. President, seeing no way approach, I move to close. Mr. Battersfield, Mr. Fatale. <laughs> Dr. Tobek? You've. <coughs> yes. Okay, so I'm going to defer to the board president in responding about the bleachers. And James, that's a wonderful story. And thank you for your credit to your school community. When we, uh, the bleacher issue is something that this board is taking seriously. And I have to begin by saying, I was so upset when I'm reading comments, oh, they don't care. If we didn't care, we wouldn't be here. Yes, we do care care about the health and wellness of our students, our staff, everyone. You know, thousands of spectators of all ages have attended events on the fields. Graduation night, packed bleachers, couldn't find a seat. They've safely attended events on the weekends, PAL, Boys Club, and even other outside organizations have used our fields. Yes, we did have two incidents, and we were unaware of the second one until somebody brought it up here, because it was never reported. We, we looked to our architects and other professionals who we have, who are well more licensed than any of us sitting up here, and that's what we rely on. Yeah, there, there's a lot of possible quick fixes. But when you look at those quick fixes, they're not always fixes that are available to these bleachers. You can't just say, oh, well, one school did it this way, so that quick, that fix, you can do that too. 
It doesn't always work. It's not that easy. I wish it was. And a number of these fixes take time and money. You know, we're exploring our options. And yes, we're going to, you know, we're going to start with signs this year. I wish I could tell you right now and make a motion to say, fix the bleachers. Put all new bleachers in. But that comes at a, as a, at a cost as well. And no, safety, someone's life should never trump the cost. But there also needs to be a plan. I've heard people say, oh, well, just take the money out of the budget. Okay, I'll take the money out of the budget. Where's it going to come from? The only place it's going to come from is the classroom. Because to absorb that kind of money out of a budget that you didn't plan for is going to affect education. Yeah, they have to be replaced. I, I don't disagree with that. And I wish I could, you know, sign, I'd sign the contract today if I could. But we have a plan. We have a plan. If we sign the contract today to replace the bleachers, they're not getting replaced till next year. And there's a lot of work that needs to go into it. You have the DP permit process that you have to deal with at Wayne Valley because there's a stream behind the field. So it's not as simple. And I wish it was simple. And I know there are people who volunteer to do it. But then that creates a liability to the people who did it as well as the district because we can't contract with parents to fix things like that. So it's complex. And again, I want to emphasize, the board is dedicated to the welfare of the students and the community. We're dedicated to fixing this problem. But you heard Mrs. Kazan speaking tonight about the ROD grants. You have to file architectural and engineering plans for anything you do with the state of New Jersey. There is one full-time person in the state of New Jersey who refused every architectural plan for every school in the state of New Jersey. One person. The bleachers are not a number one priority. As Mrs. Kazan stated also, this, they prioritize projects. And bleachers would not come into that. We're, again, we're exploring the options. Replacement through the referendum and funding is probably the best path to do it, to get what you have back. We're going to do our best. We continue to look at options, possibly again, for the school year, for this upcoming fall season and the spring. It's not going away. And yeah, I want, we need to work together on it. There's nothing wrong with working together. We get more accomplished when we sit down and work together on doing things. An example is, that, is last year's the eighth grade trip. Everybody, everybody was in a tizzy. Oh, there's going to be no eighth grade trip, no eighth grade trip. Sat down with a bunch of people, and guess what? When we worked it all out, there was an eighth grade trip. We're going to do the same process here. But again, as I stated in the beginning, it hurt me when I heard, saw comments that, oh, they don't care. They don't care about kids falling through the bleachers. You wanna have a, you wanna have a conversation with me? I'm here, I'll be glad to have a conversation with anyone. But the thing is, there's a process for doing it and we need to follow that process. And we're into that process now. And I hope, I, I hope if I'm sitting here next year, all right, by, by next September, we'll be looking at brand new bleachers out there. And I really hope the community comes together on this and that we can all come together on this. We don't need to get into social media wars over bleachers. 
Thank you. This is Kazan. Uh -huh. Okay, this is Wente. So I applaud um, to all the parents who came here to who prioritize safety of our community, pr uh, particularly when it comes to the security and safety of our bleachers. The recent review conducted to assess the safety measures in place is a significant step towards ensuring the well-being of our children and all the members in our community who utilize these facilities. While I appreciate the true work that has been gone into evaluating the situation and proposing solution, we also recognize concerns raised regarding the substantial cost associated with the proposed $750,000 project. It is essential that we continue to search for alternatives and maintain high standards of safety while being more financially and fiscally uh, feasible to our community. I appreciate some of the solutions that were provided by the parents here, I think the rental looks to me like a good option, and I would hope that something we can um, look into. You know, uh, we fully support all the parents advocating for uh, the safety of the bleachers and appreciate comprehensive review of the board. So let's continue these efforts and find solutions that align with our collective values and financial capabilities, ensuring secure and safe environment without undo financial strain to the community. So thank you so much for coming today and speaking up. I really appreciate it. Thank you. The devil's in the details. I'm not going to repeat everything Mr. Pavlak said, but as someone who spent many years on the facilities committee, I can tell you these projects just do not happen like that. Um, the referendum is what we need to focus on. We need to focus on this next step that we're taking, and it includes the bleacher projects. Those plans have already been drafted. Um, they're going to be released shortly. You're going to be surprised when you see what we're planning. And I hope that everyone can get behind this referendum, because there's a lot of facility projects that we're going to need. And we need everyone to uh, buy in. We, we need uh, them to come and vote. Uh, this is important. We're going to have a huge influx of students. They're already coming. I discussed the dual-use classrooms, the uh, additional staff that Dr. Toback discussed. Um, if we hadn't put aside money for that in the budget with the anticipation of an influx of students, we wouldn't even have the money to pay for those teachers we'd be increasing our class sizes. And that's the last thing we want to do. Extracurricular activities are wonderful, but that's coming out of education dollars. We, we have to focus on the classroom first. Um, but again, that's, the, that's not the reason for us not doing it. The, the reason for us not doing it has been stated. Uh, the budget was crafted. Um, I think the first email I got about this from uh, you two ladies uh, was the end of May. The budget had already been decided. It wasn't in there. Um, so even if we could have discussed it then, it was too late. And I and I expressed that in my email to you, um, that the money wasn't there and it wasn't budgeted. Uh, we agree with you. We're not disagreeing with you. We agree that this project needs to be done. The only thing we disagree with is the timeline. We can't do it for this season. And uh, renting bleachers, okay, that's wonderful. We did discuss it, but guess what? There's no press boxes. There's no announcements. There's none of those things that make football games football games. And we have a lot of seniors this year that are looking forward to their final season on the field with their friends and family in the bleachers. And, um, you know, we're going to do the best we can to keep everybody safe and let them have their final season, the band, the cheerleaders, all of them. Um, could we rope, and, rope them off and condemn them? Sure. but. Based on the data, it's just not necessary. Uh, we, we commend you, definitely, because you, you have made such a, a what's the word? Uh, what? Well, no, you, you've informed so many people through different uh, platforms now that I think uh, you're, you're helping us with this campaign in the temporary. Um, I, I know you've gone to the state legislators, um, and that's wonderful. Uh, if this, God forbid, and I don't even want to put it out in the universe, referendum should fail, 
uh, and they decide to pass this legislation and provide us with money, <laughs> sign me up. I'll take it, we'll take it, and grant money, money from the state. But, um, you know, that, that particular legislation's been sitting around for a long time because there's this little stumbling block called unfunded mandates. The state can't make us do something if they don't provide the money. They were doing that for years while underfunding us and uh, became such an issue that the school boards rebelled and said, you know, you have to stop. You can't just keep telling us to do things and not provide the funds because you're asking us to take those funds out of the classroom. But again, we agree with you. There's no argument there. We know, we know it's time. It's been time. Um, and it's coming. So I'm hoping that everyone will definitely support the referendum. And when you see what the plans are, I think you're gonna be happy and excited and you know, Wayne is gonna hopefully have the best. Um, and that said, I did wanna bring up one other item. Um, we have a board meeting on September 7th that's scheduled to be at Schuyler Colfax Middle School. But since this is the beginning of the new year, we have a lot of new parents. I wanna recommend through a motion that we move that meeting back here where it will be live broadcast because the Schuyler Colfax location doesn't have a live feed. So we're gonna have new parents tuning in to see a board meeting that's happening off-site and unfortunately they haven't been well attended and I did check the municipal calendar there's nothing going on in the chambers on September 7th so with that said I'd like to make a motion that we move the September 7th board meeting to council chambers okay. a second. I'll second it Are both meetings in September going to be here in Chambers then? Yes, because the, yes, because the first meeting is a PWS. So the reason I believe that we moved it was from the, the um, Nellis, from, from the board office to the schools, but it's okay to move it here then. I'm okay with it. We, we can look at a future date of you know, consider at another point if we want to go back out. Okay. Another school. Another okay. School. okay. Any other questions? Comments? Call roll. Call roll, please, sir. Mr. Fatal? Yes. Mr. Giordano? Yes. Mrs. Kazan? Yes. Mrs. Vergoloso? Yes. Mrs. Wentick? If both meetings are held here, then yes. Mr. Badishill? Yes. Mr. Prasakos? Yes. And Mr. Pavlak? Yes. Motions carry. Any other board comments? Mr. Battersfield, you're last. So I'd just like to go over something else. I agree fully with everything that um, Mr. Pavlak and Ms. Kazan has said with um, uh, focusing on the, the bleachers and uh, turning that to focus much more on the referendum to really solve the problem. Um, but I wanted to talk about something else. Um, there was an article uh, in the tap into uh, over the last week about social apps. Um, where a father had actually gone through to look at the social apps that his daughter was uh, using um, and review that and take a look over it and found several um, worrying trends within that app in terms of managing the private data of the individual um, and making that available to people. Um, I would recommend that everybody really considers this approach whenever your children are accessing anything online or through their phones or anything else that you really understand what it is that they are accessing at this time and how their information can be uh, leveraged through this. Um, spend the time to really think about the safety of your child on electronic media. Um, a large portion of the things that happen nowadays don't happen in a room. They happen through electronics and they happen through social media. Um, and a lot of people will impersonate people and will try and find ways of ingracing themselves to other people or even undermining them um, through these social media applications. Um, there are a lot of unsavory people that do these kinds of things, so like, be warned and keep an eye on your children and the safety of their data. Thank you. Mr. Sackos? I just wanted to thank everyone for coming today. And I just wanted to point out uh, what amazing students we have in this district, uh, whether they're volunteering this summer, 
whether they're working, you know, to uh, get some money uh, for, for their family or for their, themselves. Um, and I, I want to commend uh, James for, for coming here tonight. I know he spent uh, uh, his summer in Austria and uh, fundraised over $4,200, you know, for uh, Ukrainian refugees in Austria. I mean, that's, that's amazing. And uh, I want to say I want to publicly congratulate you. Uh, for being student body president at Wayne Valley, Wayne Valley High School, one of our high schools here. So uh, I hope uh, everyone else uh, listening, all the students, all the scholars that we have, uh, all the athletes, all the musicians, uh, hopefully you, you know, you're doing something productive this summer and hopefully you're getting your summer reading done uh, and you're, you're ready for school in a couple of weeks. So, uh, and James, um, you know, I hope you get to apply to uh, uh, NYU or Fordham, my alma mater. <laughs> so, uh, good, good luck this year. Mrs. Rigoloso. I just want to uh, let James know that he has the Rigoloso vote when he runs for president, okay? So I just want to let you know that. First and foremost, I would like to extend my heartfelt gratitude to Evan's parents and the parents of our community for their active participation and valuable insights. Your presence and willingness to share your concerns and suggestions have been instrumental in shaping our approach to this important matter, sometimes acknowledging that progress may not always happen as quickly as desired is an important aspect of effective communication. We understand that there may be a sense of urgency regarding bleacher safety, and we want to assure you, I want to assure you that as a mom, a Mimi, and a board member, I share your concerns. While it may seem that progress is not happening as fast as we would like, we want to let you know that we are actively working behind the scenes, exploring all options to make sure that no child ever falls through those bleachers again. So um, on behalf of the board, I just want to say we hear you, and we are working really, really hard to, to help change that situation. That's it. And I wanted to remind everyone that on August 22nd, there is the opioid awareness happening out front the town hall here at 7 p.m. So I hope to see you there. Thank you. Again, thank you to everyone for coming and speaking tonight. Um, we, we are working on this. Um, I wish it could go faster, but unfortunately, we, we have constraints as well. Um, uh, young man. I, nothing but kudos for you and what you did. And you have a bright future ahead of you. And, you know, people say, you know, what, am I, what do I get for my tax dollars? There's a prime example of what you get for your tax dollars. All right. I'm not going to get on the political campaign of tell you to ask the county and ask the state what you get for your tax dollars, but we'll, we'll leave that for another night <laughs> when I get on my uh, state of New Jersey rampage. Um, but I wish everyone a good school year coming up. School is quickly approaching. Seems like the summer just flew by again. Um, our facilities, uh, I was in Wayne Hills and Anthony Wayne this past week. I mean, our facilities department, uh, as Mrs. Gazan said, has done an outstanding job in this short amount of time. It's really not a long time when you, you, know, you figure the day school ends and the day school starts. Not a lot of days in there to get things done. And bringing contractors in and negotiating schedules, uh, you know, when people can be in buildings, when people can't be in buildings. And you know, pretty much our high schools are going all summer long so trying to manipulate um, activities that are occurring and maintaining our fields and everything else, um, it, it's a complex uh, issue. And the administration deserves a lot of credit. Just the hiring this year. Yesterday, as Dr. Tobek said, I attended the um, new teacher orientation at Wayne Hills, the whole center of the Wayne Hills Auditorium was full of teachers, new teachers, for the first time in this district. And I, I congratulate them. I congratulate them for going into the field, a field that today a lot of people are abandoning quickly. Uh, so I applaud them and I thank them for that. 
So at this point, I will take a motion to Mr. Patel, Mr. Giordano. Good night, everyone. Thank you for coming.